here we go again. Yay! This, yay! Here we go again. Oh, Your oh, favorite oh. podcast in We're all back. the world. Yes, please. Giving up the ghost with Cher and Jazz. Yay! We're here. This week we are discussing uh, disgusting. <laughs> we are disgusting. <laughs> you have this much tequila. You're disgusting. Yeah. Whoa! Two shots, and I'm on two coolers. A third and cooler. And I'm twisted tea. You're twisted, man. Twisted I am sister. twisted. Sister. I am a twisted, twisted sister from another mister. There we are. Yes, we are. We are discussing haunted health care in mm. Winnipeg and Manitoba. Dauphin, really. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, cool. We'd love to hear more stories. So if you have any yeah, please, um, we've encounters. Had a few. Yeah. We've had quite a few interesting ones. Yeah. If you've had any encounters with our health care system, like haunted hospitals or care homes mm-hmm. or... If you work in one, hell. Working, yeah. yeah like, please tell us. Ones. Uh, give us a shout and uh, email us at ghostpodcast at gmail.com or Bravo. Facebook or Twitter. Anywhere we are. Anywhere we are, find us. Find us or we'll find you. We know who you are. <laughs> yeah, we're really good at the creeping though. <laughs> like the status stuff we're finding on Spreaker is pretty bizarre. Like it we is. know who which areas listen to us how it's often really cool. it's very cool so that's really thank awesome. you to everybody we appreciate mm-hmm. the support and showing us the ghost love mm-hmm. can't stand Ooh. the sound of my voice six months in but that's okay I know, neither can i i still sound uh, like an old man with a lisp i sound like lisp. i should be having a pack of <laughs> pack of darts and i sound oh horrible. God. but anyway whatever i don't know i think it's the weight maybe if i lost weight maybe i wouldn't maybe sound I'm... so distorted. yeah maybe if i lost weight my voice would be lighter i talk like this <laughs> <laughs> I dye my hair blonde, and hey, then I have perky work. tits. No, oh, that trend's no, gone. No, anyway, no. that's okay. But uh, haunted healthcare. So we are talking. I, I have a couple of stories I want to talk about secondhand. Right, right, right. Dun dun dun. Have you ever gone into the hospital and just and felt, felt creeped out? Creeped out. Every time, pretty much. All the time. I know. I hate going to hospitals. I think. I think just you know, there's just so much sorrow. There's so much heaviness. I know. We've talked about that before. There's yeah. just so much tragedy. I know. You know, people that don't want to die. But when I go in there, though, I never go in. Go, see, you know, some people go, oh, I hate seeing so-and-so in the hospital. Well, you know what? I do, too. But when I go in to go visit, I'm always you like, have to. okay, I'm going to be like a joy, joy, sparky, sparky as much as I can be. I know. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. even uh, when my dad was sick, not so recently ago, but when he was sick last time, me and... My brother were like joking in the hallway, you know, I know. just trying to be you have to. Light. some levity. Some you levity. have to be light. Oh, sure. Because of so many people are so down. Like, I mean, like, yeah. every once in a while you see like that one person will just be like, you go, whoa. I know. You feel really bad. Like yeah. the one lady that's in the hallway yeah. or something that has no one around her. I know. Or, and you like feel like shit. And, and kudos to our healthcare professionals. For oh. Our nurses, our volunteers. Oh, our health Super aides, kudos. our doctors, like, you know, like really, I know our, our healthcare system takes a jab and we've got a health, like our healthcare system has taken a few shitty turns right yeah. now. Yeah. I mean, have. you know, just the burden on our healthcare system, just with the emergencies, I'm oh, not going to get political and stuff. No. Just like, you know, like what, what the fuck were they thinking? Because I mean, all these outlying communities now in Manitoba. Like, you can't be closing shit down, people. Sorry not to be political, but you can't be closing healthcare system. Here, exactly. And yeah. here's the thing. I'm, I'm not going to go on, on my soapbox and talk about no. this too much. I've said it in certain circles before. What I do for a living without disclosing what I do for a living. The thing is, when there's an emergency and people are brought in from around the province. Yeah. And it's, they need the highest level of Healthcare, medical like attention. Immediately. They bring them into Winnipeg. Yeah, now, our I system know. is already overflushed, yeah. overburdened, yeah. over like saturated with yeah. our own local emergencies within the city of Winnipeg. So then you bring everybody else in from everywhere else mm-hmm. in Manitoba. And guess what, people, where they go? They go to like St. B yeah. and HSC. HSC. I like, know. what the fuck? I know, but you know what? On another note, okay. A few years ago when my mother was in a car accident uh-huh. and she phoned me from a cell phone and said, I've been in a car accident. I went there yeah, and I got the same time that fire, fire yeah. and rescue got there. Mm-hmm. Right. And then I'm like, Oh my God, where's the lady in that car? And she's like, Oh, they're in the fire truck. Okay. I yeah. got to sit, sit with my mom in there and they waited for an ambulance to come in because she was non-urgent. Right. No one came. <gasps> so I said, I can take her. 
So Fire and Rescue said, okay, well. You really, eh? Fire and Rescue oh. let me take my mother, who was just in a car accident, yeah. to the hospital. Mm -hmm. And they, they messaged ahead, of course, and said we were coming. But you know what? Sitting in there, oh, my God. Mm -hmm. It's so sad, the people that are in there, because some people are in there for nothing. Mm -hmm. Some people are in there because they said, well, mm -hmm. you should have got that blood work done at the hospital. Like, not at the hospital, but at the doctor's yeah, office. Yeah. Before you came to the hospital, mm -hmm. I'm like, mm -hmm. it's like a the tax. screening, the it, screening process. It's, yeah, it's the just tax on actual emergency people. We can't treat the emergency I like know. it's like I know the walking clinic. Year, years ago, I've sa I've sat in in the hallways at Concordia when my grandmother fell and broke her hip. She was sitting there with bone scraping on bone mm -hmm. in torture and agony mm -hmm. for like at least six hours before she was seen. Yeah, like that's just ridiculous. It's terrible, I know. So, I mean, what our healthcare system has to endure and put through endless hours of overtime that these professionals grin and bear it just to oh, make sure yeah. that everybody else's lives are looked after, sustained, and, and are taken care of with the best of their ability and their knowledge at that time and with all the pressure resting on their shoulders. And kudos and to you guys. And super stress. Super Holy stress. shit. Super stressed, right? Insanely stressed. I exactly. couldn't imagine doing it. But, Too much. But Too in much saying work. that, people die in hospitals and yes they creep, do creepy yeah. shit happens yeah unexplained shit happens um so we have four stories for you guys tonight um unfortunately we were looking for a little bit more but it you know unfortunately it kind of trickled in um we have some stories from debbie and dauphin uh with her experience as a healthcare aide and professional in the uh, dauphin area at a care home mm -hmm. um she just relays her knowledge and just what she's seen and, and observed and have felt right. and she's had her own experiences and then robin who one of our first real listeners and uh, yeah. fans of our show hey robin thank you uh sorry it's been so long uh we had this interview with her about a month and a half ago but just mm -hmm. with just timing and taping and how we get together and and we were looking for more stories to compile to put this more of a show um, she's had some experiences. She's worked in the field, I think she said over 30 years mm -hmm. at a couple hospitals, her and her sister and such. So we'll be playing that, uh, those interviews for pretty you. Cool. Yeah. Two I want to share with you is pretty cool. So most recently I had to go to a neurologist cause I've had a pinched shoulder between mm -hmm. my neck and my shoulder for months. It was an agony back right. in the fall. So this fellow was quite chatty and he was like a neurologist and we're talking, I'm talking to him and stuff mm -hmm. and. I told him what what I did, not for a living, but <laughs> <laughs> I can only hope. 64 cents in and profit. Yay. Yay. Woo. Go giving up the ghost. Yeah. And. Uh, Can't even buy a beer. No, not even. <laughs> Pack of gum, not even. No, no. not even. No. That's funny. Yeah. But uh, this gentleman, I won't give his name, just that he's a neurologist and we we're talking and told him we had the podcast called Giving Up the Ghost. He was very interested. He said, oh, that's cool. And I was telling him all about it and who we are and what yeah. we do and. Then he says, because everybody has a story. Whether you I like, know. whether you out there everybody like to admit it or not, one. everybody has a story. Yeah. Now this fellow said that uh, early in his career, uh, he 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 had run a clinic. Um, I won't say where or whatever. Mm -hmm. He had run a clinic, and his clinic was so busy that he would often have to come in on weekends mm -hmm. to take care of paperwork and do right. the filing, you know, and All whatever else. Awesome. Yeah. Well, yeah. he would get his wife and his daughter to come okay. in. Okay. Okay. It's an older clinic. I know where it is. Mm -hmm. I won't say, again, where yeah. it is, just for privacy and stuff. Uh, and then he started telling me the story how, you know, they had paper from here. They had to take it from over here and put it over there. And they couldn't find a certain piece of paper. Oh, an important piece of paper? An important piece of paper to go yeah, to the file. Of course. And then all of a sudden, all the papers kind of for no reason in front of their eyes, him, his daughter, and his wife, all the papers just kind of scattered. blew around, scattered. Oh, shit. And the one he was looking for kind of floated down and landed right Shut in up. front of him. Ooh. Now, and what did I'm he not... do? He's like educated, smart person. And he totally believed. I know. He totally believed. He it's said not like to it me, was bullshit. He just he came like... clean and he said, "There is just no way to explain that. Yeah. There is no clinical way that no. he can actually make sense of what the three of them right. saw. And he's like been educated for like and they were a looking for this, years. yeah. And they were yeah. looking for this piece of paper, and then suddenly that's where it was. Ooh. Now I can't get the description a hundred percent with the scattering paper, but I believe that's mm -hmm. kind of how it went. The right, fact right, right, being right. that all of a sudden this piece, poof, and there it was. Yeah, the, the, yeah, the errant paper just yeah. kind of showed up where they needed it, Ooh. right in front of them. So that was pretty cool. That is. Why does that happen a lot of time? You notice that. 
and Something stores is helping them. Someone is helping them. Yeah. I wonder who it is always. Yeah. I wonder if it was like a residual haunting for some, uh, aid, like a clerical aide that loved their job and they came yeah, back so like, there. Damn it, this should be here, right? It's like, yeah. fuck you people, you don't know what you're doing. I'm dead yeah, like 20 years and you guys like, can't get on. this shit? Come on. No. Or if a pass, because I mean, how many other times, like even in our like ghost reveal. Yes. Passport is needed. Passport is needed. And all of a sudden, boof, oof, there, there it is, right? Oof, there, there it is. is. Oof, there it is. <laughs> but you oh, know what I mean? Oh, that might be copyright. <laughs> oh, oops, sorry. There it was. <laughs> there it might be. Yeah. But no, really. That 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 seems to be a, yeah. a steady. A standard, yes. Yeah. Doesn't it? Because energy is energy and it just wants to help, right? I know. Hopefully. Either, you would think. You would like help, to think. Either they want to help or they want to fuck you. Better than ma- right? malevolent spirits. Obviously, yeah. they like who the, who is there. Yeah. Or they could really fuck them up. And oh, just yeah. Burn the place totally. down. Like, <laughs> you want that piece of paper? <laughs> Find that bitch. It's in that crumple, fire crumple, over there. Crumple, crumple, crumple. It'd be like... Yeah. It'd be like... Just killing for your next yeah. fire, right? Yeah. I, I had a piece of paper in front of me, but I didn't yeah, want it. Was it. Was <laughs> there. And anyway. that was it. That was... Yeah. Oh no, my notes! Mm. Oh, our show notes. Uh, yeah, and then okay. Now the other story. So I went for my yearly physical with my doctor not that long ago. I don't know if I told you about this one. Uh, no. And as it turns out, me and Jen have the same doctor, so that's like freaking okay. amazing. Yeah, so that's funny. So when I was telling Jen about the story, she had no idea how this goes down. <clears throat> I was just telling the doctor. I had a lot to share with her because, like, of all the death happening in my family lately, yes. I want to share my my. Uh, you always have to make sure your physical and your mental is in check. Oh yeah, you know, yeah, full yeah, yeah. disclosure. You know, yeah. this is my doctor. I trust her. She's got my back. She's she she knows my history. That's and, right. Yeah. And this yeah. is what's happened. And I think yeah. I'm okay. And <laughs> Sherry's not okay. Her funny bone. Funny bone, but it's not funny. Not so funny. So so you know, I'm all kumbaya with my doctor. Like fuck, I'm screwed if she ever retires because she's a good girl. Mm. Anyway. You know, it was almost like talking with a friend and I told her what's going on and, and she totally get this. Actually, that might've been before my dad passed. It was just my mom. Oh, oh shit. I got to catch her up. Right. Oh, you better. Oh yeah. yeah. You better like share. I uh, know in any event, cause she helped me when my grandmother passed, who I was extremely close to and I'd taken a year off work and all this kind of yeah, yeah, whatever. Yeah. But, um, talking to her and I says, well, the one gra- granted grace or given grace mm-hmm. that I, I'm thankful for, I said, me and a friend have a podcast. Do you know what a podcast is? She goes, yeah. And I'm like, oh, yeah. And oh, I tell her, nice. She goes, that's so cool. And I says, yeah. And I, I really enjoy it. And I told her who we are and what we do. Yeah. And then she's like, you know who really likes that? Now, I won't say the girl's name. Mm-hmm. I'll just say T. Yeah. She goes, T is all into that, which is the receptacle and the yeah, two yeah, receptions yeah. up front. Cool. And I said, oh, that's cool. And I know T for a long time. Yeah. And she says, uh, you should tell T. And I'm like, okay, I will. Yeah, she's so, like, okay, I will. Okay, I will. <laughs> Hell yeah. We'll do that, yeah. She goes, because T has been on ghost tours and, and all that kind of stuff. Cool. I'm like, okay, cool. So I go talk to T. And just the nicest, sweetest lady ever. Mm-hmm. Like, you would not think she'd no. like or into the stuff. I mean, right. look at us. Either yeah, way, right? Uh-huh. We're normal. No, I maybe, think. Maybe. Sort of. Uh-huh. Possibly. Maybe. I go up to T and I said, hey, yeah. I said, uh, uh, Dr. So-and-so was saying... You know, you've been on ghost tours and that. She goes, oh, yeah, all the time. And I said, oh, you like that kind of stuff? I said, she's like, by yeah, yeah. Way. By the way. And then I told her about the podcast. And cool. she's like, holy shit, that's cool. She didn't say shit. But she's like, oh, that's cool. And I said, yeah. And I gave her the business card and I said, check it out. She goes, yeah. And then she starts telling me about how she has had some paranormal experiences. And there's In the office? Well, yes. And, and in her own personal life. She oh, says cool. she just feels that there's always been something with her. Hanging around? always hanging around yeah. like when she was a child she'd yeah. go to sleep at night yeah she said one time she was frozen in her bed she was like three or five years old and there was like a glowing or by her bed kind of Ooh, thing and it wouldn't that go away sound like paranormalish that mm. sounds more crypto ish possibly you know but yeah. she's but she felt like i guess uh, she was very close with her grandmother her great-grandmother mm-hmm. and her great-grandmother passed maybe or something or there was something and she felt that there was always something in the house there's always right. like spirits or the house was haunted, but yeah. her parents would deny it, and she grew up like that, blah, oh, blah, blah. all the time. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. would love to have her on and tell her her story. Like, this mm-hmm. was probably about five months ago now, so okay. I'm not saying my memory is fuzzy, no, but no, I mean, no, as no. far as the yeah. detail about her experiences, right. Know? And then she says, 